What's going on, people? It's your main man, Larry. When it's on the line, I got something neat I need to tell you. East-West matchup tonight, numbers four, Highland Springs Springers against J.R. Tucker, a little underrated. They come in with nine starters lost on both sides of the ball last year. Highland Springs coming off a big win over Huguenot two weeks ago. You would think that this game would be a blowout. We talking 30 points at halftime, zero. It hasn't been that way, people, I gotta tell you. It's been a very tough matchup for Highland Springs. They have put 22 points on the board, but Tucker is playing with a lot of heart tonight. Highland Springs is killing themselves on offense. They've had some illegal procedures. They've had some fumbles. They've had a lot of miscues, and Coach Burton is not happy at all. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm expecting a much better half from Highland Springs than what I saw in the first half. They did have a couple of a nice punt return by my man, Keith Meredith. They had a nice touchdown pass. One was called back because of a uh, illegal man downfield. It's been a tough game. We're going to go. Good job, Larry Willis. Clearly, the Springers are on fire early on in the season, and the next victim looks like it's going to be. Oh, 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 oh. Hasn't been easy beating the Tucker Tiger this year. Ryan Isaac, quarterback, first right. year. Sorry, running back this year. Phillip Anderson has been finding it tough to keep his chin up. That man, Nolan Burchett, has been leading a strong team as a squad. And on special teams, Keith Meredith blows open this game with a 58 yard punt return. And they're on the scoreboard first. Next series for the Tigers, Jamal Show will prove why he's so critical to the Springer defense. Makes a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and forces the fumble. And the coaching staff makes short work of it. Two yards out, Tony Brown makes it 14 to nothing. One of the things the coaches are definitely working on with their players are not making the simple mistakes that uh, put the other team back in the game, like offsides, for example. Ryan Eyes going in heavy traffic. The tip, Larry Williams, but they're going to say he crafted it all for that set them off. Next series, Michael Axton makes eight yards, takes it to the 31, and then Tony Brown will find Larry Williams for 31 yards out, 22 to nothing at the half. Fourth wire takes him into the locker room for a few choice words from Coach Burton. Two yards, three yards. Okay, you're slipping off. And I want the football, yeah, but that first guy's got to take tackle. The second guy, third guy, now we're thinking strip. Okay? Come on, we're not doing a good job of tackling out there. We're going to come off the ball, we're going to knock him on it. You got that? No strip. We're going to go out there and run him off the ball. Well, clearly inspiring. Well, 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 then I put the Tucker Tigers with a few tricks of their own. And on the night, 86 yards for that man, Keith Meredith, as he got the spring even closer. For touchdown number two for Tony Brown from three yards out, and he'll raise the score up 30 to nothing. Of course, that's the key call from backup quarterback Kevin Harris, who gets his first TD on the night, but uh, Coach Curl has some plans. Coach Curl is thinking, I need something for Matt McDaniel. How about off the guard for 69 yards? The highlight of the year so far for the Tucker Tigers is right there, 38 to 7. On the Springers' next series, Jamal Short will show everybody what extra effort looks like. Jamal with his first touchdown of the year. Knocks off J.R. Tucker. The score, while it sounds impressive, wasn't all that much of a game for J.R. Tucker, but they played with a lot of heart. Highland Springs had some major miscues to be a fourth ranked team. Come week four, they want to have number one Verana. They make those same mistakes against Verana. It's over, baby. It's going to be very, very ugly. Highland Springs has a week to think about it with Henrico coming up next. Hopefully, Coach Burton can get his, before, his boys together and so they can have a good showing against Morana. Well, offensively, uh, you know, we were a little disappointed in the first half because we scored on big plays and we'd like to try to, you know, uh, control the line of scrimmage a little bit more than we did. Tucker's pretty good up front, and um, I didn't give them as much credit as I should have. They're a pretty good team. and uh, So, but defensively, I thought we played well. I'm disappointed that we gave up some points. Well, it was a mental mistake to me. I'm going to come back next week and practice hard and I'm going to fix these mistakes. And we got him right with next week. That's all I'm focusing on. My man, Louis Burrell, defensively, I was very impressed with the defense first half. How do you think you played defensively the first half? Uh, the first half, we did pretty good, giving up uh, no points the first half. But uh, then we came out the second half, we gave up 14 points. That's not acceptable for our defense. Were the mistakes that you saw tonight, were they freshman mistakes or was it just a case of um, your team wasn't ready? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to make excuses. You know, the two-week layoff may have something to do with it. But, I mean, you know, we, we can't make excuses. And, um, 
you know, Tucker's a pretty good team, and we can't afford to make mistakes against them or anybody else. And, uh, you know, sooner or later down the line, it might come back and bite us in the rear end. Final score, 45-14 to 14 for the number four stringers. Tony Brown rushed for two and threw for another one, and Keith Meredith to a 58-yard punt return.